Well, it's a great day. I'm just about to go out to the shops, buy some milk, some bread, basics. And uh, we're on to the book of Revelation today. It's a brilliant book. It really repays careful reading, meditation, contemplation, prayer. There's a lot of simplistic interpretations of it, trying to work out a timetable for the second coming of Christ. It doesn't seem to me that's what it's about. It's about Christ's presence in his persecuted church throughout all ages. It was written during the Roman Empire and the persecutions that were happening then, really giving hope to God's people in difficult times. And it's a book that can give hope to us in our times as well, although it's not one of persecution in the West. It is in places uh, communist rule and Muslim rule. Uh, but in the West, it's not one of persecution actively. Uh, but we do go through difficult times, particularly at the moment through COVID-19. And I want it to be a sign of hope for you as well as you read through Revelation with me. I'm going to read a bit of Revelation chapter 1. I've, written it, I've uh, photocopied it so I can read it out here. <clears throat> it's quite a long bit I wanted to read to you today. It's from verse 10 onwards. Chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, On the Lord's day I was in the Spirit, uh, and I heard a voice like a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash round his white chest. The hair on his head was like white, like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze, glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Jesus. You know, John was an old man at this stage in exile, uh, prison in Patmos. <clears throat> He'd suffered persecution for his faith in Jesus. Hadn't seen Jesus since Jesus' uh, ascension into glory. Uh, he was the disciple who Jesus loved, uh, it says in the Gospel of John, so he was writing that about himself. But they also had an intimate bond. If you remember at the Last Supper, it says that uh, John was lying against Jesus' chest because they used to recline to eat. He had a position of intimacy and closeness to Jesus. And he hadn't seen Jesus physically, his friend, his best friend, for, uh, you know, about 40 years. And then he sees Jesus, transformed, transfigured, changed, glorified, altered. But he sees Jesus again, and he falls down. What must he have felt to see his best friend again after so many years? And to see him in such a glorified state? That encounter with Jesus is what we all need. And Jesus says to us, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of COVID-19. Don't be afraid of the vaccine either. I've spoken to a number of people who are frightened of the vaccine and don't want to take it. We don't need to be frightened. Jesus is with us. Now, most of us may not be given a vision like that, that John had. But we meet Jesus every day in the supermarket. If we go for a walk in the park, just walk down the shopping street. Jesus is there in our, in our living room, sitting in our favorite armchair. While we're watching the telly, Jesus is there. And he says, do not be afraid. And you can have an encounter with Jesus today, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. That's what he desires for you, to meet with him. He's glorified and transformed, and he wants you to be glorified and transformed. And he wants you to hear his words. Do not be afraid. Father God, thank you that you send Jesus to us. Thank you, Jesus, that you are present with us all the time, everywhere. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you make Jesus present to us in our hearts. Help us, three in one God, to meet with Jesus, encounter him, 
in whatever way you decide. And deliver us from fear, deliver us from anxiety in this time. Amen. Amen. So hold on to Jesus. Meet with him today, whatever form or shape, whatever location or place. He is there waiting to meet with you. We have, uh, just to remind you, our services are shared live on Facebook, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, 1.15, 1.30 for our French language service as well. And uh, this Sunday uh, is our nativity service. The kids will be dressing up with tea towels and singing and dancing, uh, socially distanced, of course. And afterwards, we're going to be going outside, weather permitting, to sing carols in the square outside the church to bless our neighborhood, to witness to them of the presence of Jesus, come to save them. So God bless you. God be with you. And he is always with you, waiting to encounter you today.